authorized at 0 hundred hours. The February Fire Department, King 39, will be signing off after 56 years of service. South King Fire and Rescue, signing off. Copy that, you're welcome aboard. In the mid-1800s, the Des Moines Zenith area became a hotbed of development. Residents considered the area as a potential state capital. As Military Road first cut a swath along the West Hill, there were signs of previous forest fires, but no homes or people were threatened. There were none. Traveling the rustic road was challenging, and most area travelers chose the Mosquito Fleet. Growth picked up following construction of Pacific Highway South about 1930. In 1935, the legislature enacted a law allowing for the formation of fire districts. But many residents did not learn of the law until after they had suffered fire losses and begun to protect their own communities with makeshift fire protection. After several huge fires, including the loss of the Des Moines Elementary and High School building in 1925, residents grew tired of waiting for a fire truck from Kent to lumber up the steep gravel hill that was Kent Des Moines Road. Mechanic Otto Marshall of Des Moines Auto Company used donations to equip a 1923 Model T with two 60-gallon chemical tanks. By 1937, Del Osterhaus and his wife, known as Wally, were the only private fire department in King County. Dell installed a siren on the roof of his service station at South 225th and Marine View Drive and coordinated assistance from community volunteers. In 1938, a fire in Redondo resulted in the formation of a committee to address the problem of uncontrolled fires. They bought a Model A Ford flatbed and obtained a couple hundred feet of hose. Without any training or official organization, they protected the community from fire. About 1940, a group of citizens in the Steel Lake area worked together to acquire some hose and a trailer. The equipment was stored in a shed where the first arriving car with a trailer hitch would hook up and respond to the fire. Fire Chief John Long and his volunteers operated their unofficial fire department. About 1945, a committee approached Pat Connor with a plan to use his property in Midway to build a temporary fire station. Connor became the first fire chief of the unofficial Midway Volunteers. Throughout our communities, the story was the same. Residents saw a need to protect themselves and their neighbors from fire and work together to make it happen. South King Fire and Rescue descends from these dedicated pioneers. It wasn't until August of 1942 when residents first attempted to organize a fire district. By a 46 to 46 tie, King County Fire District 15 failed to organize in Redondo. The process for forming a fire district was arduous. Citizens passed petitions throughout the community the proposed district would serve. County commissioners held public hearings and then placed the question on the ballot. The cost to form a fire district? About $30. In the special election of November 7, 1944, Fire District 22 was created by a vote of 109 to 10. As this original map shows, the tiny district did little more than surround Steel Lake. First Commissioners Collins, Stewart, and Disbro obtained a surplus Army fire truck with donations prior to the arrival of tax money. With a first-year budget of $400, there was no money to build a station. The truck was stored in the backyard of a volunteer. A citizen named McIntosh loaned a garage to the fledgling fire district and allowed a siren to be installed on its roof. Despite lack of funds, the district obtained land and a Quonset hut. The hut had to be placed atop a concrete block base because it wasn't tall enough to accommodate the fire truck. With the addition of a hose tower, the first fire station was completed in 1949 at 30817 18th Avenue South. During construction of the first station, a ladies auxiliary was formed to raise funds and provide support. This group would later become the famous Federal Way Flames. On February 17, 1948, voters approved a huge annexation by District 22. Ironically, 39 people voted. The question passed 34 to 5. The new district boundaries were approximately South 288 to South 344th Streets, 
and Pacific Highway South to West Valley Highway, about nine square miles. In 1959, the district completed a new station at 311-3228 Avenue South. Despite the interruption of two structure fires, 200 people attended the open house. In 1961, District 22 began responding on EMS runs after buying a used aid car from District 2. On October 10, 1962, Interstate 5 was opened from the Puyallup River Bridge to Midway. While the freeway brought growth to the area, the district initially suffered serious losses of tax revenues when homes were torn down to make way for the superhighway. The district now needed more stations to protect areas east of the freeway. In 1964, Volunteer Chief Bill Smith became the first paid person in the Federal Way area. About 1967, a new station was built in the North Lake area at 33637 32 Avenue South. It still stands on what is now the Weyerhaeuser campus. The current Station 65 was built by District 22 in 1967. The first talk of merger in the Federal Way area began with a conversation between Chief Thorson of District 39 and Chief Smith of District 22. Chief Smith from District 22 and I went to a state fire chief's conference up in Bellingham and we rode together and that's when we got to talking about merging the two districts and the farther we went the more it sounded like it would be a good deal for the community so when we got back why well, we both approached our boards and told them what we'd been talking about the biggest part of it was selling the community on the idea one of the biggest questions when we ran out, went around knocking on doors is who's going to be chief and that seemed to be of more interest to them than anything else and so we told him, well, one of us would be chief and the other would be deputy chief, and that uh, pretty much took care of it. On October 10, 1967, voters in Fire District 22 voted to merge into District 39 by an 84 to 5 margin. The merger was effective December 1, 1967. It was not a seamless transition. I couldn't say there was no problem. But with the first do no harm merger policy and the passage of time, Fire District 22, the Steel Lake Federal Way Fire Department, dissolved into Lakeland District 39. The merged departments became known as the Federal Way Fire Department. When a fire in the Star Lake home of Al Provost took his home in 1945 or 46, he had no one to call for help. The event motivated area residents to form Fire District 30. Provost would later become the district's first fire chief, after redrawing the proposed district boundaries to exclude Redondo, the proposal to create Fire District 30 was approved on June 17, 1947 by an 83 to 20 vote. The original district map was not updated to show the exclusion of Redondo, but its boundaries were south 208th Street, south to 288th, the Green River on the east, and Puget Sound on the west, excluding the areas of Redondo, Zenith, and Fire District 26. First Commissioners McCallan, Foster, and Erickson acquired the assets of the Star Lake Fire District Association in 1948. Assets included the station on Pat Connor's loan property, a station in Midway, and two trucks. First Fire Chief Al Provost named Pat Connor to run the Star Lake Station. Command of the Midway Station was given to Chief Blackburn. 1950 was a busy year for the district as they built two new stations using shared forms. A station was built in Midway on land leased from John and Ida McCready at 23418 30th Avenue South. A contractor did all the work. Star Lake volunteers built their station at 3640 South 272nd Street with their own labor. With the same budget as Midway, they added a meeting room, kitchen, lavatory, and sleeping rooms. In September 1955, commissioners approved a petition by citizens asking to annex into District 37. The area in question ran from 64th Avenue South to the Green River between South 256th and South 288th Streets. Commissioners agreed the area would be better protected by District 37. In 1958, the district hired Mary Moore as a part-time secretary, a position she held for 22 years. District 30 jumped into the first aid business in 1960. They bought two Emerson resuscitators, first aid and extrication equipment, and converted two panel trucks into aid cars. When Chief Provost retired in 1963, Seattle Police Officer Phil Cruz was named to replace him. Cruz served until 1979. 
Chief Cruz's major accomplishments included the construction of the current Station 66 in 1968 and purchasing three modern crown pumpers. Station 66 is dedicated to the memory of Claude Graham, longtime District 30 Commissioner. In 1966, Cruz drilled along the cliffs that blocked access to Woodmont's beach cottages. Firefighters rappelled down the cliffs on fire hose. The plan was to hold the fire in check until pumps could be hand carried to draft from the sound. Beginning in the mid-1950s, District 30 began losing ground to the city of Kent. In 1962, the Midway Station itself was annexed by the city. Multiple annexations reduced tax money and call volumes. In 1973, residents in North Midway saw they could get better service from Districts 26 and 24 and petitioned to be annexed. Around the same time, the Midway Station was closed and sold. When Chief Cruz left the district in 1979, Bob Brown was named chief until the merger with District 39 was complete. On February 5, 1980, voters approved the merger of District 30 into District 39 by an 85% yes vote. Besides financial savings, District 30 Fire Marshal Bill Zagala said the merger would result in an improved insurance rating, automatic backup from District 39 paid staff, and protection from the devastating effects of multiple annexations. Zagala accepted a position with Federal Way in the Fire Marshal's office. An area south of Kent Des Moines Road and east of Military Road, now known as the Island, is a lasting reminder of the annexations that divided District 30 and ultimately forced its merger with Federal Way. With the merger, District 39 assumed the Star Lake and Woodmont stations and the Midway Star Lake Fire Department was history. Five years after the failed attempt to form Fire District 15, Redondo residents were ready to try again. Empowered by a successful petition to be excluded from Fire District 30 during its formation, First Commissioners Max Kluth, Fred Auer, and Al Church, no relation, succeeded in forming Fire District 32. The special election of November 4, 1947 brought another ironic vote of 39 to 1 in favor of organized fire protection for the small vacation community on the Sound. Before tax money was available, eager residents held bake sales and dinners to raise money. A flatbed trailer fitted with a gas-driven pump was purchased. On its first day in service, the new pump successfully handled a small house fire. In November 1949, a Ford pumper was delivered. According to Cliff McNeil of the Redondo Community Store, it was housed in a warehouse inside the north end of the Redondo Skating Rink building until a station could be built. Voters in Mirror Lake, Buena, Lakota, and Adelaide approached District 32 asking for protection. On November 21, 1950, area voters approved the annexation 72 to nothing. The new Redondo Mirror Lake Fire Department was now eight times the size of the original district. January 20, 1951, the district's largest structure, the Redondo Arena, a two-story combination dance hall, restaurant, and skating rink near the waterfront, burned. The building was a total loss, including a new $100,000 organ just installed. Volunteers may have had to race to remove the fire truck from the burning building before fighting the fire. Mutual aid from much of South King County was used. The first station was completed in 1954 at 28200 9th Avenue South. Construction plans included participation in a University of Washington seismic study. The concrete slab in the truck bays is dome-shaped and as thick as four feet in places. Since its construction, no earthquake has caused a single crack in the building. A Mirror Lake station was constructed around the same time at 590 Southwest 312th Street. A 1934 Ford pumper was purchased to serve the area. The same year, a ladies' auxiliary called the Fireflies formed at Mirror Lake Station 2. First Fire Chief John Humenic coordinated construction of the first two stations before retiring in 1955. His successor was Vern Bushnell. As the Mirror Lake area continued to grow, plans to build two new stations were hampered by lack of money. Between 1955 and 62, the district budget grew from $5,300 to $23,000. In 1964, the current Station 68 was completed. It served as a volunteer and day shift firefighter station before its conversion to a training maintenance facility. In 1965, Fred McPherson was hired as a part-time chief. He would later become full-time chief. On February 16, 1966, the Federal Way area suffered its first firefighter fatality. 
Fred Auer, original commissioner and first aid captain, died in the line of duty after suffering a heart attack while fighting a small house fire just east of the current Station 68. Auer was 52 years old. Chief McPherson became a commissioner and was replaced by Chief Oral Suiso about one year before the merger with Federal Way. On May 9, 1972, voters approved the merger of District 32 into District 39. The vote was 198 to 98. The merger took effect on June 1, 1972. Four District 32 employees, including two future Federal Way fire chiefs, moved into positions in District 39. Oral Suiso became fire marshal of the merged district. By all accounts, the transition was smooth and the Redondo Mirror Lake Fire Department faded into history. In 1948, residents worked to form a fire district in the southwest corner of King County. This original map shows the boundaries of the proposed district. The east boundary went nearly to the Auburn Supermall, then curved around the city of Pacific east to the Stuck River. On March 1, 1949, Fire District 39 was formed. The vote was 47 to 2. First Commissioners Kapazinski, Madsen, and Wilson operated for a year before tax money was available, focusing on fundraising and planning for a truck and a station. First Fire Chief Figliota moved away after a short time and was replaced by Chief Laverne Curley. After a short stay at the Edgewood Fire Station, the first Lakeland engine was moved to volunteer Jim Hardy's barn. In March of 1952, a $22,000 bond was passed to build a station across the street from Jim Hardy's barn. April 26, 1953 was a proud day as the first Lakeland station was dedicated. Equipment included a resuscitator so volunteers could respond to drowning incidents at the many area lakes. Firefighters saved a number of lives. On January 6, 1953, a vote of 99 to 7 doubled the size of District 39. In August of the same year, Lakeland's engine assisted Fife at a catastrophic fire that took seven fire departments to extinguish. In 1955, the district needed a second station to cover the west side. Fifteen volunteers showed up to man the station. Among them was future fire chief M.L. Bud Thorson. The new volunteers not only staffed the station, they built it. In October 1956, Lakeland purchased a 1947 Ford fire truck from District 26. The truck was stored at Bud Thorson's house until the station was complete. Only the hose bed would fit in the garage. Lakeland Station 2 was completed in 1957 at 32212 Hoyt Road Southwest. Chief Curley stepped down for a year in 1956. Jim Hardy was named chief until Curley returned. In 1964, the district passed a bond issue to build a new station. The current Station 63 was completed in the same year. About midway through 1964, Bud Thorson was appointed volunteer fire chief. When Chief Thorson drew up the budget for 1966, he recommended hiring a firefighter to work day shift. Commissioners agreed and offered the job to Thorson. On January 1, 1966, he became full-time chief at a salary of $6,500 a year. As the years ticked by and growth enveloped the community, mergers occurred and more career staff was hired. Chief Thorson saw growth as good for the area but wanted the fire department to maintain close ties with the community. His vision also included taking the lead on local and regional issues. Fire department administrators served with area service groups, the Chamber of Commerce, and with regional professional groups. In 1978, the Federal Way Fire Department was named Citizen of the Year by the Chamber of Commerce. May 1, 1979, the Auburn Federal Way Provider Group finally put paramedics on the streets. The News Tribune trumpeted the arrival of King County Medic One. After building the first truck and hiring the first medics, the Federal Way Fire Department provided administration to the program for several years. Chief Thorson's vision fostered strong community support for bond issues and levies. In 1977, voters approved a $1.9 million bond issue to build two stations. The current Station 62 was opened and staffed round the clock on February 14, 1979. Station 61 followed in 1981. With growth and a supportive community, Federal Way continued to hire firefighters and staff stations. Stations 66 and 63 were staffed, followed by Station 65, after a remodel in 1986. Station 64 was staffed upon its completion in 1989. In August of 1990, Fire Chief Bud Thorson retired after 35 years of service.
Chief Thorson led the fire department through three mergers as it grew from a small volunteer district into a mostly career area of 36 square miles and nearly 100 employees. The fire insurance rating improved from an 8 to a 3 under Chief Thorson and citizens showed their support by approving multiple financial measures and helping the district respond to staggering growth. Chief Thorson was a key player in bringing paramedic and professional dispatch services to southwest King County. Fire Chief Bud Thorson's impressive legacy is measured in the most precious terms, lives saved. Throughout the 1990s, the department continued to grow under the leadership of Fire Chiefs Bob Hash, Dave Crossan, Administrator Jim Hamilton, and Fire Chief Al Church. At the end of 1994, the Federal Way, SeaTac, and North Highline Fire Departments consolidated administrations and services as they considered a potential merger. In 1996, the consolidation was dissolved, but fire departments still considered the question of how to use their budgets wisely. This led to the closure of the Federal Way Dispatch Center in 2002. Fire districts that had been dispatched by Federal Way for years were forced to seek less expensive dispatch services elsewhere. The South King Fire Districts had provided their own dispatching from the beginning, starting with fire phones in the homes of chiefs or at local supermarkets. Someone always had to be home to answer the phone 24-7. When District 22 merged into 39 in 1967, the first professional dispatch center was created at Old Station 4. The center was moved to Station 62 after its construction. Over the years, the Federal Way Communications Center brought local fire districts together and helped make the first three mergers happen. The closure of Southcom is the only money-saving necessity that has cost jobs in the merged districts. As money was redirected to hire more firefighters, six dispatchers moved into firefighting positions. Right by Lakota Playfield. In fact, it was on Lakota Playfield where he had a telephone pole. It was, the call came in as a chimney fire. Uh, Gene was at the station at the time and he was a uh, a uh, student at Bates Vocational School, but he was at the station. That was uh, the first aid car in after that incident. And the call came in as a chimney fire down in 6th Avenue Southwest. And as I was responding down there, uh, Gene and another volunteer got in the fire engine. And pretty soon we could hear sirens coming this way, which seemed kind of strange. And for some reason, they misunderstood the location or whatever, but they started heading south, or started heading north on 21st Avenue Southwest. And there had been snow, and there was still snow in some areas, so they still had to tire chains on the fire. You needed chains when you were on the side roads, but the chains on the main roads were dry. And so uh, it, was, it was very, very slippery. And as they started going around the corner, the truck slid, and. Uh, smashed into a telephone pole and put him through the front windshield. All of a sudden the siren went, didn't go up and down, it just locked wide open. Pretty soon we get toned out for a uh, injury accident, uh, Lakota Junior High, and we knew that's a fire truck. I got to call that, uh, that I should report there immediately. And of course, I felt there was an accident, but I didn't realize there'd been a fatality. So it was quite a quite a shock when I got there and found that out. Here's the truck just plowed into one of those huge, not a small, but one of the big high tension lines. The sirens going wide open, and he'd gone through the window. And, uh, His father was a firefighter in Wenatchee, and uh, so we uh, rented a bus and a large group of us went over to Wenatchee for the service. Fire District 26 was created on April 30, 1945 by a 64 to nothing vote. First Commissioners Slew, Lehman, and Wyatt appointed Dell Osterhaus first chief and immediately ordered a factory-built 1946 Howard Cooper fire truck. Original district boundaries encompassed five and a half square miles. The first station was in the basement of Dell's garage, 
it already had an alarm system. In 1950, Bill Halpin was elected chief, but Dell remained involved. Volunteers purchased a 1947 Ford chassis and built their second fire engine over the next year. This do-it-yourself attitude remained a hallmark of District 26 personnel. After moving the fire engine to the Odd Fellows Lodge near Dell's garage in 1948, the first station was built in 1952. Of course, volunteers did much of the work. In 1952, Chief Halpin was replaced by Chief Harry Burbridge. Throughout the 1950s, the famous Bra Brigade firefighters protected the district while their male counterparts were away at work. The independent spirit of the Waterland community was on display. In 1955, Chief Burbridge was replaced by Chief Carol Inman. In the same year, the father of Des Moines Fire Protection, Del Osterhaus, sold his service station to partners Stockdale and Butler. They inherited the fire phone. In 1958, a second station was built where the current Station 26 now sits. In 1970, Old Station 2 was incorporated into a huge remodel. In the same year, the marina was developed at a cost of $3.5 million. After using a small boat owned by the city, in 1986 the district saw the need to better protect the marina and local boaters. Marine 26 was purchased in 1986 for $80,000. When the city of Des Moines incorporated in 1959, it tried to take over the fire district. Angry commissioners quashed the attempt in court. In 1961, Ken Levick was named chief. He served until 1983 when Bob Arnold became chief. Chief Arnold retired in 1996. His successor was Chief Jim Paul Hamas. In 1977, Des Moines police began dispatching for District 26. Dispatching moved to Southcom in the mid-90s. The city was, uh, was substantially smaller than the fire district. And as I said, the original city hall was in an old fire station, so that we always have had those ties since just the beginning of the city of uh, working together and helping each other uh, as the city grew up. And then, of course, in the 70s, as the city annexed and expanded area, essentially they came out to become the same size as the fire district. In the last couple of annexations, the city actually took the fire district with, along with the city boundaries, and boundaries and made us bigger.